Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Breaking news, a child is hurt after a drive-by shooting in Fayetteville. Coming up, what new information we've learned in the last 45 minutes. Also, more breaking news. Several sheriff's vehicles respond to reports of a shooting in Johnston County. What we are piecing together about this investigation. And dual Doppler 5000 radar is still showing just a couple of showers in our southern counties, but the rain is almost out of here. I'll show you when it starts to feel more comfortable around here. And cars, trucks and floats may be returning to parades in Raleigh. A local veteran explains how this will help him and his fellow service members participate in the NC Veterans Day Parade. And we welcome you in at six o'clock on this Friday morning. Beautiful sunrise. Behind I us. mean, Look at goodness. That. Goodness gracious. I'm Catherine Brown in for Renee Chu. And I'm Jeff Hogan. Thanks for joining us here and making us part of your Friday here as we get things started. Sun's up. It is gorgeous right now. Elizabeth Gardner in the WRS Bear Weather Center. Take a picture of yeah, that. Yeah, it looks absolutely beautiful. We still have a little bit of rain in our southern counties. It's almost out of here. Uh, it's. I would give it another 15 minutes. We have uh, that last bit of rain moving out of Cumberland County. It's going to cruise through southern Sampson County. And that's it. And we do start to see some clearing. That cold front will be very slowly pushing to the coast. Watch how we clear nicely this morning and we'll see mostly sunny skies for the day today. We may see a few puffy clouds later on this afternoon, but again, we're going to be nice and dry. There's nine o'clock. There's lunchtime and again, looking uh, just nice for us as we get through the day. Now we still have that very sticky air mass in place and that will take some time uh, for it to, to work out of the viewing area. So it uh, we, we will be you know dealing with that as we get into Saturday. We should end up seeing a much nicer air mass that uh, moves in and I'll show you how much the humidity will drop coming up, Ken. Yeah, Elizabeth, at 601, those uh, wet conditions you talked about in the southern part of the viewing area means that our neighbors to the, in those communities are waking up to wet roads this morning, and the green on the map shows exactly where we're talking about, as Elizabeth just mentioned, just mainly in Sampson County area this morning. Checking our live traffic sensors at this hour, nothing to report, which is good news. All the major thoroughfares in and around the Triangle are delay-free at this hour. We're following breaking news at this hour. A child was inside a home when hurt in a drive-by shooting. WRL's Kelsey Coffey is in Fayetteville right now, and Kelsey police have been on that scene for about six hours now. Jeff, I spoke with officers on scene probably within the last 45 minutes or so, and they say that bullets went through this home on Danish Drive where that child was inside and shot. So it appears their investigation is focused on this home, but officers have started a removing crime scene tape from the homes that are here nearby. But let's take you to video now from the WREL breaking news tracker from earlier this morning. The shooting happened uh, just after midnight and police are still searching for that shooter. We're working to get an update on that child's condition. I've been checking in with the police department uh, for multiple times over this past 15 minutes. We'll be sure to keep you updated as we find out more information. Kelsey Coffey, WREL News, live in Fayetteville. To breaking news in Johnston County now, where a police investigation is underway at two locations in Kenley. WRAL's Heidi Kirk joins us from the Johnston County Sheriff's Office. And Heidi, one of the scenes is in front of a house there. Catherine, and we left that scene within the hour. We want to take you straight to that video where we shot on Christmas Light Road here in Kenley. Now, Johnston County deputies are currently investigating what appears to be a shooting, according to our broadcastify logs. Now, there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding the investigation, and we're continuing to press the Johnston County Sheriff's Office for updates. And as soon as we get updates, we'll share them with you as well. Heidi Kirk, WRL News, Johnston County. Well, last night's storms, maybe you heard them, left behind some wet roads, caused some trouble for some drivers with that ponding out there. At least two crashes happened along I-40 near Trailwood Road and Gorman Street. First responders were there on the scene of one crash around 11 last night. And before that, this is video showing police cruisers and a car that appears to have hydroplaned and got turned around the wrong direction. There are no reports of any serious injuries with that. Fire crews are working to learn what caused a fire at a home in Clayton. This happened on Michael Way just before 8 o'clock last night. This video was sent to WRAL, and you can see it shows smoke coming from that home. The Clayton Battalion chief says when they arrived, flames were coming from the right side of the house. You can see it there. And they confirm one woman was in the house. She was able to get out safely. Several neighbors say they believe the house is a total loss. 
Floats like these could be allowed once again in Raleigh parades. It would be the first time since 11-year-old Haley Brooks was hit by a truck while dancing in the 2022 Raleigh Christmas Parade. The NC Veterans Parade in November would be the first major parade in the city if we see these changes take effect. Organizers remain hopeful after making the hard decision to cancel the parade last year because vehicles were not allowed. There's a lot of our veterans now, we're in our 70s and 80s and, and 90s even. And to walk that, that route from down Fayetteville Street up to the Capitol is just too much for a lot of them. And meaning the use of vehicles would make it a lot easier for those folks to participate. One safety recommendation involves having organizers provide proof of safety checks for vehicles within 30 days of an event. The city plans to gather feedback from the community and will present a plan of action to city council June 18th. Chapel Hill police are looking for a hit and run suspect. This is Brianna Beasley. Police say yesterday morning she hit a cyclist at the intersection of Franklin Street and Keenan Street. They say she initially stopped, then left before giving any information. The cyclist was taken to the hospital, fortunately is expected to survive. Beasley drives a black Honda Pilot with the North Carolina tag TFL4785. If you know where she is, you're asked to call police. There is a warrant out for a felony hit and run charge. You have a chance to honor the lives of a family of three killed in a crash in Garner this weekend. An emotional day yesterday. It was at a church in Ellenboro, North Carolina, the western part of our state. The funeral honoring Tyler, Susie, and Miles Campbell was held uh, just west of Charlotte. That's where the couple lived and attended high school before going to NC State. Corinth Baptist Church was packed with loved ones remembering their impact on the community. The Campbells were genuine to the core. Hospitable, joyful, open, lighthearted, and always ready for a good time with friends and family. They made relationships with their, their most important priority. Their empathy was boundless. A weekend service is also planned for the three, and it's 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon in Garner in a building Summit Church uses on Vandora Springs Road. The driver charged in that case, 25-year-old Jordan Porter, is facing three counts of second-degree murder. Police say he ran a red light going 82 miles per hour in a 45 mile an hour zone and had both alcohol and marijuana in his system as well as in his car. And if you're wondering why we haven't shown you a mugshot yet, it's because Porter has not yet been served. Good morning, I'm Chris Lovingood in the WRL Life Center. We are just shy of under three hours away from seeing the May jobs report from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. And CNBC is kind of covering this right now, saying that economists are projecting 190,000 jobs were added in May. And that's only slightly compared to the previous month. And in terms of how we track when this report comes out, I mean, basically social media. I mean, this is the BLS uh, websites on their, their uh, X page, social media, that kind of t will show us when exactly the report comes out. So we'll basically be hitting fresh around 8.30. And last thing I want to leave you with here is just how futures are looking this morning uh, to see exactly how the market will react to this. It looks like it doesn't want to agree with me here. Okay, maybe it does. There we go. You can see there's a little bit of change happening with the S&P 500, Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. Not too, too significant there, but we'll be watching to see how that number shifts once the market opens. Prosecution in the Hunter Biden trial is expected to rest its case today after calling two additional witnesses. Those two additional witnesses were a forensic chemist and a DEA special agent. Biden's defense will then de decide, they say, whether to call an expert witness after the prosecution rests. Yesterday, the man who found Biden's gun in a trash can where Hallie Biden disposed of it testified. The jury also heard testimony from Hallie herself. Hallie and Hunter Biden were romantically involved after the death of her husband and Hunter's brother, Beau. Defense lawyer Abby Lowell says he expects the case could be finished by Monday, including closing arguments. Coming up in 10 minutes, President Biden's response when he was asked if he would rule out a pardon for his son. The Boston Celtics stars showed up as they defeated the Dallas Mavericks in game one of the NBA Finals last night. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum combined for 38 points, including that one. Brown takes it to the basket. There we go. Brown taking it to the basket for a slam dunk. The Celtics won 107 to 89. Something to keep in mind. Interesting stat here. 70 percent of teams who win game one end up taking the NBA Finals. Oh, there you go. Coming up in What's Trending, how Doris Burke made history, becoming the first female TV analyst for an NBA final. Not that I'm counting, but I am.
we are one week away from the U.S. Open returning to Pinehurst inside a week, six days. And the USGA has already put together an interactive experience that intends to grow the game while honoring its history. A 35,000 square foot tent is open to anyone until Sunday. Even if you don't have a ticket, you can go over there. Lots of merch, lots of fun things to do. And you get inside, there's an up close look at the trophy the champion will take home. You don't need that ticket until Sunday night at 6. And on Monday, when practice rounds for the championship begin, you do need a ticket the rest of the week. Still to come this morning, the suspect in the Gilgo Beach killings has been charged with murder in two new victims. We'll have updates from the suspected serial killer as he made a court appearance yesterday. Also, we now know who the new chancellor will be at NC Central University. How Carrie Dixon sees the future of DEI after the Board of Governors voted to dismantle the policies. And we had a cold front with showers and storms last night. Still just a little bit of light rain in our southern counties. I'll show you when that moves out and when we'll see a nice drop in humidity. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. It is 612 right now. We do still have just a lingering shower in our southern counties. It's almost out of here. It's uh, moving on into the just the southern part of Sampson County. No more lightning with that. So it's almost done. And in a lot of places, we're already seeing some sun breaking out after our front move through. Look at that. I mean, that is a gorgeous shot right there of Sanford and that sun just popping up over the horizon. We will see plenty of sunshine today and it will be dry. We're not looking at any afternoon storms today or tomorrow, but it is 71 in Durham and Raleigh and 69 in Fayetteville. So it is a warm warm start this morning and it is also still on the sticky side. So uh, don't be fooled by this. The cold front has moved through, but it will take a little time for that humidity to drop. Now tomorrow morning should feel very comfortable, but it'll still feel sticky through this afternoon with a high of 89. Kent? And Elizabeth, those lingering showers you mentioned in the southern counties uh, and for our neighbors down there, you can see uh, the wet roads that are showing up in Sampson and uh, Lenore County. Uh, so keep that in mind as you're getting ready to head out. Good morning to you down there in Lenore County and Sampson County as well. Checking our live census this morning, great news to report. Really nothing to worry about in terms of uh, traffic on all the major thoroughfares. They're all delay free at this hour. Thank you, Ken. President Biden says he will not pardon his son Hunter if he's found guilty of federal gun charges. Biden also said he would accept the outcome of the trial, which will continue this morning in Delaware. Hunter Biden is accused of illegally purchasing and possessing a gun while abusing or being addicted to drugs. And that is a violation of federal law. It's the first time the child of a sitting U.S. president has ever been on trial. The suspect in the Gilgo Beach killings has been charged with murder in the deaths of two more people. Accused serial killer Rex Heuerman pleaded not guilty to the new charges in court yesterday. Prosecutors allege Heuerman killed Jessica Taylor and Sandra Costilla, whose bodies were found on Long Island in 1993. Heuerman was first arrested in 2023 in the deaths of the three of the four so-called Gilgo Four. Heuerman is also the suspect in the death of a seventh woman. Charges have not been filed in that case. We now know who will be the new chancellor at NC Central University. But her hiring is creating a domino effect, now a vac vacancy at another UNC system school. Dr. Carrie Dixon was chosen to lead NC Central. She'll be leaving her post as chancellor of Elizabeth City State University. Dixon is a first-generation college graduate of multiple UNC institutions. We asked her about the future of DEI at NC Central after the Board of Governors voted to dismantle the policies. I'm really looking at uh, how we work together with our faculty, work together with our students, because everyone is welcomed at NCCU, and we want to continue to tell that story because that's something that we take pride in. The outgoing chancellor, Johnson Akinlea, has been in the role for eight years. His last day is June 30th. It is snake bite season right now. Dozens of folks in North Carolina are already being treated in local emergency rooms. So far this year, at least 50 people have received antivenom treatment through Duke, UNC, and Wake Med Hospitals. There were six this week. North Carolina is home to six venomous snake species. State Wildlife Department says copperheads are the most dangerous, making up roughly 90% of our state's venomous bites. If you get bitten, doctors say you need to keep as still as possible, but also get to the emergency room. 
Most of the things that people do cause harm. Even something as simple as ice, we shouldn't apply ice to it. Definitely don't cut anything. Sucking doesn't work and actually can increase the size of the wound. Do not put a tourniquet on. So fatal snake bites are extremely rare, but doctors say you should be extra careful the next time you are outside just about anywhere around dawn and dusk, especially. Summer concert season is heating up. We have details about where you can see some live music this weekend. Some good stuff mm -hmm. coming up. First, there are some big shows happening tonight in Raleigh. <laughs> Country star Kane Brown is bringing his In the Air tour to PNC Arena. He'll be joined by North Carolina band Parmalee. Also tonight, former One Direction member Niall Horan will be at the Coastal Credit Union Music Park at Walnut Creek. Over at the North Carolina Museum of Art, 12-time Grammy Award winner Babyface will be on stage. Tomorrow, Steep Canyon Rangers will be playing Booth Amphitheater. Brothers Osborne will be at Red Hat Amphitheater. June is Pride Month, and the town of Apex is holding its annual Pride Festival this weekend. It's happening tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Town Hall on Hunter Street. The event will include music, games, food, and vendors. There'll be a special kids zone as well with inflatables. Admission is free. And the town of Morrisville is celebrating Juneteenth tomorrow at Shiloh Park. From 11 a.m. until 2 p.m., there will be music, historical presentations, food trucks, and games. There will also be the unveiling of a new mural. And admission is free to this as well. To get more information about these events and uh, anything you could do this weekend, just head over to WRAL.com and search keyword out and about. And we can only hope that the weather cooperates. Everything we've been seeing so far looks like it will. It's, I mean, this sunrise, perfect. It's, it's spectacular. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get up early more for this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Elizabeth Gardner over in the WRAL Severe Weather Center. Well, that's looking good later today. It is. And, and you're right. You know, all the weekend plans look fine. We're going to see uh, some hot conditions, but humidity, especially Saturday, should be on the low side. So, um, and, and we're not looking at rain in the forecast, except maybe a little bit late on Sunday. We'll check that out coming up. Gold's for a pretty sunrise there popping up and uh, apex looking nice chapel hill um, we're really starting to clear pretty rapidly in the triangle area chapel hill looking in this direction almost completely clear courtesy of top of the hill restaurant and of course fayetteville uh, is a little closer to where we had some showers lingering there's just one tiny bit the uh, thunder and lightning has dissipated that one's about done just south of clinton we're seeing just a little lingering sprinkle but again that we're pretty much done with it we saw varying amounts of rain now that typically happens when we have thunderstorms moving through they're going to be pockets where we had about uh, one and three quarters of an inch that was south of Fayetteville and uh, north of Clinton. We had another one uh, around parts of Johnston County, Wilson County, Edgecombe County, about an inch and a half. But an average was more like a half an inch to an inch across the area and some places only ended up with a, about a trace. So that cold front is moving on out, taking the clouds with it. We'll continue to see clearing skies for today. So looking lovely. We're watching another front that will start to approach us. It's not showing up here on our map yet, but it's going to start to develop right here across parts of the west and move in our direction. So this is how that looks on Sunday. We may wake up to a little bit of low cloud cover or fog, and then potentially we have some scattered storms that'll start to make their way through. This may be a little bit early. This is probably the earliest trending model on showing some of those showers beginning to move through as early as around one or two. Um, it may be more likely that we see it late in the afternoon and uh, into the overnight, but it doesn't look like that we'll see a whole lot of moisture with that particular front. So for your weekend, still hot, but Lower humidity for Saturday, 88 degrees. It would be a perfect day to get out on a boat or on the lake if you happen to be so lucky. Hotter and more humid Sunday with a high of 93. And then we'll have a chance of storms, most likely late in the day. Check in tropical satellite. It is that time of year. As a matter of fact, for next week, there's the possibility that we could see a tropical system developing potentially near Mexico and the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, it's pretty typical that we see tropical systems by this time of year. Uh, in the last seven years, we've seen uh, Storms form as early as April, May, and June. Last year, it was June 2nd when we saw Arlene. So we'll be watching that very closely next week. Once we get past the weekend, we see a little bit of a drop in our temperature and humidity. I'll show you just how much it may drop for the weekend. Coming up, Ken. All right, Elizabeth, you have been mentioning all morning those lingering uh, wet conditions that are neighbors to the south, and we're seeing that uh, in parts of Lenore and Sampson County, so be careful out there as you go out. Uh, around the triangle this morning, all the major thoroughfares are delay-free this morning, nothing to report. And to that end, let's give you an idea of what's going on on the roadways. This is I-40 and Airport Boulevard. Traffic flowing nicely, 
in both directions. This is what you want to see, particularly if you have an early morning flight and you're getting ready to head to the airport. Of course, you can take us with us. Listen to us on the radio at 99.3 FM in Raleigh and 96.5 FM in Durham. Thanks, Ken. Coming up in What's Trending, the release of a new Hunger Games book and movie is set. The character from the original book, fans speculate, will be in this prequel. And five juveniles were taken into custody in connection to a series of car break-ins in Durham. How all of these confiscated guns are connected. The Today Show is wrapping up a week-long celebration of the plaza with an event that's made the space so iconic, a concert. Coming up this morning, Megan Trainer returning to the stage for a summer concert. The Today Show gets started on WRAL at 7. And here's a look at your winning NC Education lottery numbers on your screen. We're back with What's Trending next. This What's Trending report sponsored by Rug and Home. All right, Hunger Game fans, a new book and movie are on the way. Fans are speculating about who this story will be about. So Ken Smith's here now with What's Trending. Huge fan, of course, the last prequel, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, was about President Snow in the early years. Well, author Suzanne Collins says the fifth book in the series will be titled Sunrise on the Reaping. It's another prequel and will begin with the reaping of the 50th Hunger Games. Now, Hunger Games fans know that character Hey Mitch, played by Woody Harrelson, competed in those games and will likely be the main character this time. All right, Ken, so settle down, okay, because, <laughs> because the book is uh, not until March of 2025. Oh. Yeah, and the movie is November of 26, mm. so we had a, we had a chiller heel yeah, here. Be patient. Yep. Something to look forward to. Yeah, How about that? True. Well, the NBA Finals <laughs> kicked off last night and beyond the court history being made, Doris Byrd becoming the first woman to call a major men's championship in the U.S. history last night. Uh, the longtime sports analyst was named to the lead NBA broadcasting crew for ESPN at the start of the season. Now, ahead of last night's Game 1, LeBron James posting support on X saying important moment for our sport tonight. Love and respect to DB and Everything she does to elevate all of us, you are the GOAT, of course, GOAT meaning greatest of all time. She just continues to the shatter these barriers, mm -hmm. right? Just continues. She was the first person to call the uh, uh, game on the radio back yep. in 2020. So she's just working way up. That's awesome. NBA Quite Finals. The trailblazer. Now. Nobody even blinks an eye now. She is she yeah. just on the crew it's for great. so long. It's perfect. <laughs> love it. Love it. All right, Dolly is coming to Broadway. Country music icon Dolly Parton planning a musical inspired by her life. The 11-time Grammy winner is said to be writing new songs that will pair with past hits for the stage show. It's titled, Hello, I'm Dolly. <laughs> She's also said to be co-writing the stage story. Parton says she hopes the show hits Broadway in 2026. Just a little bit of patchy light rain lingering in our southern counties from last night's front. I'll show you when we'll have a nice drop in humidity behind the front. And a child was shot inside this home in Fayetteville during a drive-by shooting. Coming up, what we know about this investigation. Durham police are looking for someone who impersonated a delivery driver and stole a package. What they say you can do to make sure this doesn't happen to you. 